Good morning, I'm Wayworn Worm, and welcome to my channel. And welcome to Horde of the Dragon Queen, episode 12, Return to Greenest. It took them the rest of the night to get back to Greenest, but it was an uneventful night. If Leosin's escape was quickly discovered, no one came after them. With the Cobalt camp on fire, it was likely that the entire camp spent the rest of the night in chaos, and Leosin's disappearance wouldn't be discovered until morning. Or at least, that's what they hoped. As the sun rose over the green fields, the heroes of Greenest were rewarded with the sight of the town. The quick pace that they had set leaving the camp was long gone. Everyone was exhausted, even Flintfinder, who had been propping up Leosin more and more over the trip. As they reached the edge of town, they noticed that a small trench had been dug near one of the roads heading into and out of town. It wasn't clear if this trench was finished or just the start of a project. On the edge of the trench that faced the town, it appeared that the dirt was all being placed there and then pushed down into a solid mass. They also noticed that the side facing the town of the inside of the trench was very steep, while the other side was noticeably less so. Flintfinder nodded as he saw all of this. Good defensive measures. Tess looked at him quizzically. What kind of defensive measures are you talking about? He pointed at the trench. That will eventually surround the whole town, and these roads in and out will probably be replaced by bridges, at least at the point of the trench. Either wooden stakes, or maybe eventually a wooden wall will be placed on top of that beat-down pile on the inside of the trench. It will make it harder for things on the ground to rush into town and do what the raiders did two nights ago. As they continued toward the keep, a small parade formed behind them as people stopped their work fixing the damage and repairing their lives, and cheered on the return of the people who saved them. When they finally reached the keep, Nisim Waladra rushed out and took Leosin from Flintfinder, propping his master up as he draped his arm around him. Looking at the group, he gave them a look of pure gratitude. Thank you so much for rescuing him. Please meet us for lunch. I'm sure we'll have much to talk about. But for now, the governor is looking for you. One of the guards at the gate showed them into the keep and brought them to a receiving room where the governor was sitting behind a desk writing something as they were brought in. He looked up at them and smiled. You've returned safely and quickly. I'm very glad to see that. Standing up, he motioned to several comfortable-looking chairs and couches in the room. Please, sit. Make yourselves comfortable. Ale and food will be brought in, and then you can tell me all that you have learned. True to his word, a nice breakfast was brought in as he joined them in the seating area, and he would have no talk of business until after the food was finished. At last, the last of the plates were being taken away. Governor Nighthill looked from one to the next of the party. What did you learn? Flintfinder cleared his throat and began. The raiders are a part of the Cult of the Dragon, a cult that worships Tiamat. Apparently, they have been raiding in the green fields for some time, gathering a horde for Tiamat when she returns to Faerun. We think we have a good idea of at least the local key figures, but I have a feeling that the cult is much larger than just this roving band out here. Greenest was attacked because it was the largest target in the green fields, and they had raided almost every other settlement around already. They also apparently have some dragon eggs they are trying to hatch. Governor Nighthill looked a bit sobered at the news. This is good to know. I'm appalled and sorry. 
but also glad to learn that Greenest was attacked because it was an op because it was opportunistic rather than anything else. It means that it's very unlikely that they will return here. But it is also disheartening to learn that your town is not held in high enough regard to have been chosen for anything other than the fact that it was large, it was there, and it was undefended enough to be a viable threat. A viable target. Thank you so much. I have the gold that I promised. 250 gold pieces each. And I will always praise your courage and your daring for what you have done over the last few days. You are always welcome here in Greenest, and please feel free to sleep. You all look like you haven't slept since the last time you left here. I will have someone escort you to rooms. Each of the heroes thanked him and graciously followed the servant who brought them to well-appointed rooms, which had a single bed each. They missed the lunch meeting with Leosin and Nassim, but it was changed to a dinner meeting. The late afternoon was shining in a private dining hall in the keep as the heroes of Greenest met with Leosin and his band of monks. Food was laid out, and once everyone was seated, Leosin, who looked much healthier than he had when they last saw him, began. After all you've already done for me personally and for the people of Greenus, I hate to ask anything more from you. But the need is great, and I dare to hope that you can aid me one more time. I need you to return to the cultists' camp. You know your way around it now. If the cultists are, are preparing to conduct another raid, or a large body of them marches away... Or if anything substantial is carried into or out of the cave, I need to know. If you have a chance to get into the camp and look around again, that would be the ideal way to spot anything that's changed. Although, with how we left the camp, I understand that might not be possible. He smiled wryly at the group. I don't recommend letting yourselves be captured, however. Garrett nodded. That's a great idea. The, the not being captured part, at least. As for the mission, he stopped to look around at the others for confirmation, and seeing some, he continued, I think I can speak for everyone here when I say we'd be happy to. Some of us are from Greenest, and some of us came here seeking answers, and others just happened here. But we all have things to avenge on this cult now. Flintfinder spoke up. Leosin, years ago you saved my life as I led a small uprising against a tyrannical overlord. You may think that I repaid any debt I owe to you after last night, but I disagree. After this, my debt to you may possibly be repaid. Leosin smiled graciously. Thank you, Flintfinder. I was so surprised to see you last night, I figured that I had died. Looking at the rest of them, he continues. Thank you. For this, I will pay 150 gold pieces each, and we will work out when the contract is concluded as we gather more information. I will continue to rest here for a few days and then make my way to Ethereal. Meet me there when you have more information. If I've already moved on, there's a paladin there named Anthar Froom that you can speak to as if you were me. At the name, Garrett looked up. If I had any doubts about you, they are now gone. And why is that, Sir High Hill? Because Anthar Froom is a good friend of mine, and he sent me here to investigate the dragon activity. Leosin stroked his chin as he took in that information. Hmm. Very good. I feel like there are several people here in the Sword Coast who are separately starting to investigate this issue. I will leave you to keep tabs on this group as I try and find each of these persons and start putting together a group to see how large and how dangerous this cult really is. 
Tess spoke up. Well then, it is settled. We will leave at first light and meet you, hopefully in a few days, in El Thoro. Leosin waved semi-dismissively at Tess. There is no need to leave immediately. I do not expect the plans of the cult to change anytime soon. There are still some more settlements to raid in this area, and given their pattern of attack, it will be almost a fortnight before they begin to start moving against the next settlement. Tess shot daggers at him. A childhood friend of mine was kidnapped by these cultists, and every lead I was able to gain has come to a dead end. Greenest was a long shot that could maybe be inferred by a couple of the leads that I had as they hit their dead ends. And here I have finally caught up with the cult. That long shot paid off. We need to move with haste before I leave, before I lose the last remaining lead I have. Leosin sat up and took her words more seriously than he had when she started. I can appreciate that. In your position, I would have the same desire. I've had the same desire in your position in the past. I would suggest you temper that desire with patience. They are not going anywhere, and if you act rashly out of haste, only disaster awaits you. Thank you so much for listening to episode 12 of Horde of the Dragon Queen. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for this week's Friday video.